Can you hear that? That's the sound of all the anti-vegan trolls out there that saw the title of this video and clicked on it so hard and they are triggered so hard right now and they're chomping at the bit, ready to light up that keyboard in my comment section of all the reasons why they think veganism is terrible. Veganism isn't natural. Veganism will make you sick. Veganism will kill you. Veganism won't let you build muscle. Veganism will make your hair fall out. Veganism will make you weak. And where do you get your protein? Because I've never heard that question in the past 10 years. But for anyone out there that is ready to light up those comments section because of their visceral hatred for veganism, because I've seen this so much online in the past 10 years, I invite you to take a breath and step back and ask yourself, what value is that really adding to the world if I spend my time doing this? And the answer is not a lot. At the end of the day, I'm not here to dismantle yours or anyone else's truth of if you enjoy eating animal products and or you tried being vegan, but it didn't work for you. That's OK. Live your truth. Your life is your life. This message is for people who are interested in being vegan, who are perhaps uh, getting their first steps in it, but not sure where to go, or people that don't want to be fully vegan, but maybe want to incorporate maybe 50% of their diet into plant-based or even 25% or 75%, whatever. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not an all or nothing. I think the more plant foods people eat, the better. And at the end of the day, well, I don't actually think the whole world will go vegan. I think the more of us that can and do it in a healthy and positive way, it's going to have a positive impact. And it's really about spreading, spreading a message of love and positivity and uplifting your health and helping the animals and the planet. And I don't understand why people who don't want to be vegan have to tear down that lifestyle. If it's not for you, great, that's okay. But for those of us that can do it, we should do it because it does have such a positive impact. And for me, while I initially came to the lifestyle for completely ethical reasons, I had been a vegetarian for almost 20 years. I think it was about 19 years. I went vegetarian when I was 11 because I read the book Diet for a New America and it just ripped at my soul of, oh my gosh, how are we doing this to animals by the billions living in these factory farms? It's just horrible. And I was young, but my, my heart was very awakened at that age to just not want to participate in that. So I went vegetarian when I was 11 years old and never wavered from that. Years and years and years later, I had a consciousness shift at 30 years old to just sort of, I, I, I really call it some sort of download from the universe. I, I had, had thought about dairy and eggs, but not really because it was on my mind of, oh, well, you don't have to kill the animal for them. But Something shifted when I turned 30 and I started exploring and researching more and realizing what you have to do to those animals to procure dairy and eggs and how awful those industries are as well. And then I watched a documentary called Earthlings that really takes a deep dive into all parts of animal consumption and something very profound shifted in me where I said, I absolutely cannot take part in ingesting these animal products anymore. So I decided to be fully vegan out of ethical reasons for the animals and for the planet. But then something interesting happened. So many health struggles that I was having, because again, being vegetarian doesn't automatically mean being healthy and being vegan doesn't automatically mean being healthy. There's a lot of mistakes you can make with it. And I'll get into those throughout this video. And I think that's where people feel frustration is because they just become vegan and omit things without including the things you actually need to thrive on this lifestyle and so that's where their frustration comes in and they feel like the diet failed them but really they were just making mistakes through a lack of education if you will um, so i'm going to go into those but i was coming to this lifestyle with a lot of health problems that some were related to diet some were related like to lifestyle and it was really quite amazing because within some of them within just a few days of being completely vegan and eating in a way that was very abundant and healthy for me, I had some massive improvements and other things happened throughout weeks and months that were just flat out miracles uh, for some of them. So I'd like to share those with you today. If you are curious about being vegan or just incorporating more plant foods into your lifestyle or just curious about what it even means to be vegan, just like with my minimalism, if you've watched any of my other videos, veganism is not about deprivation. It's not about 
feeling like you have to suffer just for the sake of ethics. It's um, yes, the ethics are 100% the first and foremost important thing for me. Veganism has never felt like deprivation or lack or taking away, just like my minimalism doesn't feel like deprivation or lack or taking away. It's about living a life of intentionality and abundance and taking only what you need, but realizing just those few things are jam packed with the things that you need to thrive and can help us to live in much more balance and harmony with nature and the planet. So without further ado, now that we have that all that out of the way and hopefully the vegan trolls have calmed down a little bit or maybe are curious to even sit through the video and hear a different perspective perhaps, um, let's get into it. What is the list? These are 12 health issues that my body healed when I went vegan. So. Starting with number one, this I would say happened within a few days, maybe even like on day two, I felt a difference. My energy, my energy started to soar through the roof. I would have labeled myself, I didn't know the term for it back then, but chronic fatigue. I was having so much coffee to get through the day and I just never had enough energy. I was a professional athlete at that time. And so I was putting my body through a lot, but while I was vegetarian, I was not eating enough and not eating the right foods. Just a lot of cheese and oils, like so much cheese and milk. I was addicted to dairy products and never too, too many eggs because they always kind of weirded me out, but just chronically under eating and eating a lot of greasy, cheesy, fatty type foods that were not giving me energy. and. When I went vegan, I, I will have to say it was a focus on a high carbohydrate, whole food, plant-based diet. What does that mean? Focusing on foods like fruit, vegetables, rice, potatoes, legumes, just whole foods. And then of course with healthy fats in there like nuts, seeds, avocados, but carbohydrates, then you know, you hear this so much in diet culture of carbs are bad, carbs are bad, carbs will make you fat. And I came across these two YouTubers, Durian Ryder and Freely. I've mentioned them before in one of my other videos. And they were promoting this lifestyle of abundance and eating as much as your body wants, eating till you're actually satiated, spinning the diet industry on its head and saying, no, you don't have to restrict your calories. No, you don't have to starve yourself. You just have to eat the right foods and then you eat enough of them and you will be nourished. And I was, at, I, mean, I was exploring veganism and I know I didn't feel good in my health. And I was like, well, this is totally different than how I used to eat, but I'll give it a go. I like experimenting. I don't like putting my life in someone else's hands like doctors or pills or whatever. I want to take my life into my hands. So I began eating things like tons of fruit, really, um, loads and loads of fruit, which I had never really eaten that much fruit before. Um, tons of rice, tons of potatoes, tons of pasta, tons of vegetables and legumes, and really cutting out things like oils, even uh, olive oil, uh, coconut oil, avocado oil, those are better than seed oils, but I just, I really had never heard before that oils might not be so great for the body. You know, we're all like, oh, olive oil, heart healthy, right? The Mediterranean diet. Well, I'll get to that a little bit later. But I, when I took those things out and focused on the abundance of these fruits and these carbohydrate rich fruits, it was like an energy I had never experienced in my life, way more than coffee because it wasn't jittery or fake energy. It was, I would eat a meal and rather than the food coma that you feel yourself, that, you know, that everyone says, oh, I had such a big meal, food coma. I would eat this big meal of, of fruit or rice and vegetables and I would feel amazing. I would get up and like, oh my God, I wanna like do stuff. And I would have so much more energy in my workouts, so much more energy when I was on stage performing, so much more energy just to get shit done during the day and i wouldn't crash it wasn't the you know people say oh fruit well that's a sugar that's a sugar high i'm like no fruit is fructose which is actually a really important nutrient for your body and it has loads of fiber in it and fructose actually specifically doesn't even need insulin to be digested into your bloodstream so you're not getting that uh spike that you would from say like a lollipop but I was eating, so when I was eating these things, I, I felt incredible. I had energy all day and my schedule was kind of wild back then. I was a performing artist and a teacher and a choreographer. So there were some days I would perform till 2 a.m. and then sleep a couple hours and have to get up at 7 a.m. to teach. And I would just eat all of these healthy foods, especially tons of fruit during the day. And I felt freaking amazing. And I was like, oh, this is what it's like to have energy. This is what it's like to, you know, what a concept. Like, 
Food should give you energy. It's our fuel. It shouldn't make you sleepy. You shouldn't need an espresso after your meal. You Food should give you nourishment to go do stuff. And that's exactly what I felt. And it was pretty incredible. I mean, I could have work a 14 hour day and sleep just a few hours, which for the long run, that's not a healthy, but that I, that's what I wanted to be doing for my career at that time. And I, I felt amazing. So energy was through the roof. That was the first thing I noticed. Number two, chronic congestion. I used to have so much snot and sorry if this grosses some people out, but I'm sure some of you can relate. And I, I you, you can see people, you know, that are always kind of sniffing their nose or like <clears throat> clearing their throat or just always kind of feeling stuffy or maybe they always have uh, sinus infections or ear infections. And I was a competitive synchronized swimmer. When I was in the water, there's something about the water that just like pulls the snot out. So sorry, this is gross, but I was always blowing my nose in the gutter and I always just had so much snot. Even if I wasn't sick, it was just always chronic congestion. When I would like brush my teeth in the morning, I would have to hock up phlegm, like disgusting. And, but I just thought that's, you know, when you have something your whole life, you don't think about it. But when I started eating this way, all, it was within a couple of days, I took these breaths and like, oh my God, I can like breathe through my nose. What is this? And I had to stop blowing my nose all the time and stop coughing and like clearing my throat and my ears felt more clear, but just the being able to breathe, especially through my nose and not have all that snot there because that was inflammation caused predominantly by dairy. Again, I hadn't eaten meat in almost 20 years at that point, but dairy is highly inflammatory and highly mucus causing in the body because mucus is your body trying to get something out of you. So when I took out the dairy and the oils, my body didn't have to create all this inflammation to try and get that gunk out there. And by the way, I was always having organic dairy. This wasn't bad milk. I always had organic, you know, natural, no additive milk and cheese uh, this whole time or most of it because I was, I was raised to be aware of that. Um, but it still had created all of that phlegm. So within a couple of days, the snot was gone. And I notice now still, am I perfect with oils? No, because when you go out to eat, everything has oil. And I work at a restaurant. Sometimes I'm there with a long shift and want to eat that food. And yeah, I'll eat it. And yeah, oils can make things taste better. But I notice it immediately. The, the I will eat something with oil in it and I will get a stuffy nose within a couple of minutes. So that's just your body's warning signal of, hey, this isn't the best stuff for us. You could probably choose something better. So chronic congestion, that was another amazing thing that lifted pretty quickly. Number three, this one was cool. Clarity of my eyes. My eyes actually, they brightened. The whites of my eyes got whiter. My, the, my eyes are brown, hello. <laughs> um, but they, they seemed more luminescent and my eyes always seemed kind of puffin and, puffy and swollen and shut, which is another side of inflammation. And they opened up and just looked brighter. And I started getting compliments on my eyes, which I had never gotten before. And that's when I, my consciousness shifted too to start to want to wear makeup less. I was still a performing artist back there, so I'd put gobs of it on for work. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I started feeling more confident with my own natural beauty, which was kind of cool. Number four, athletic performance and recovery. I mentioned I was a professional athlete. I was in Cirque du Soleil. I had retired from Cirque du Soleil by that point, but I was a professional dancer and aerialist still at that point. And I was also a teacher and choreographer. So if anyone that knows teaching out there and has worked with young kids, that takes so much energy out of you, especially when it is an athletic thing and you're showing how to do things with your body and kids are just, you need to be on stage with them to, to lead them through. <clears throat> So that was both of my careers were taking a lot of energy and specifically though with athletic performing, I was able to do things better than I had done 10 years ago. And while I was dancing and doing aerial work, you know, I could do these incredibly long physical days on the job and my body felt awesome afterwards. I would just do a little stretchy, stretchy at night, stretchy, stretchy in the morning. And I recovered so much quicker. I had way less lactic acid, way more energy, way more endurance. And well, I had retired from synchronized swimming specifically, that was my main discipline. And I would get in the pool still to show my, my students things or just to make artistic pieces or whatever. And my body was capable of doing things better than I had been doing when I was training 60 hours a week on the United States national team. And I was like, what is this? This is crazy. Like I have so much energy. I have so much ability to recover and 
I don't, I'm not in constant pain after I do things, even though I don't even train anymore. And I even went back to work with my, the United States Olympic coach was my coach. And I went back and she, I wasn't training anymore, but she's like, you are so much better than you were when you're training. Like, how is this possible? And it was 100% the fuel that I was putting in my body. Again, tons of fruit, vegetables, rice, potatoes, limiting the oils and keeping just the healthy fats of avocados, nuts and seeds, coconut, thing, olives, things of that nature. So that was really amazing to see that. And that now 10 years later, as I'm approaching 40, I turned 40 in a couple months, that still holds true. I never get in the pool anymore because I am very retired from that sport, but I'll still for fun, I'll get in. And my body is able to do things that it shouldn't be able to do because I don't train anymore, but I have such amazing fuel going into me that it's able to produce these sort of athletic accomplishments because it just has so much proper fuel in my body, glycogen in my muscles, and just clean energy that keeps me going. Number five, mood. This one was amazing as well. And this I also noticed within just a couple days of eating this way. I went from being, you know, the chronic fatigue and everything that comes with that of depression and anxiety and just sort of like blah, even though I had these very high energy professions in between, I felt just sort of like, just sort of blah, that's the, the kind of the best way to put it. And then with moments of actually really, really bad anxiety too. And I have another video about why I quit drinking coffee and how much coffee exacerbated my anxiety disorder, if you want to check that out. but. I noticed within a few days how much my mood not only stabilized, the, the bleh went away and the anxiety came down, which is huge for anyone that's suffered anxiety, you know how much of a gift it is to not have anxiety and how much better it feels to not be panicking all the time. But I, it was not only just a leveling out, but it was a lifting up. I felt, started feeling like giddy and happy for no reason. I was like so excited to eat some dates and bananas in the morning and then go on a power walk and then come home and have a smoothie or a big salad. And then my brain would get all lit up with like ideas for choreography. And I just felt happy. And I started being a nicer person because I wasn't so just blah on the inside it was like a natural mood elevator for me and that stands still 10 years later that stands true today sometimes i'm not perfect and i if i'm on the go or i'm traveling or i'm stuck at my restaurant all day and didn't wasn't preemptive and didn't bring food for myself and so i eat my restaurant food and i or i just i was really really busy and excited doing something and got like sort of manic focused and did under eight i will feel like shit. 10 out of 10 every time if I don't eat the, these proper fueling foods and eat more oily, greasy foods that will fill you up so you can eat less but aren't giving your body the proper fuel or I just under eat in general, I will feel like shit. And I think that's why so many people come to veganism and feel, oh, I was so weak and I was so tired. Well, you probably were under eating because we're trained in diet, especially women, we're pushed of this notion of you have to eat less and control your portions and count your calories and restrict and it's good if you only eat half and save it for later and like that sucks, like what a way to live, to, to live in such restriction and constantly feel hungry and berate yourself because you feel hungry. Your body's hungry because you need to eat, the body is smart. We're, we're also trained in Western medicine to ignore all these pains and signs that the body's giving us, but the body's trying to communicate. If your body's hungry, you need to eat. And if you're eating tons and tons of food, but you're still hungry, you're probably eating the wrong foods and not getting the right nutrients. But it is easy to under eat on a vegan diet because they are just such calorically less dense foods. Like if you eat this much steak and then that much potato, there's gonna be way less calories in the potato than the steak. And so you don't need want to eat just that much potato or that much lettuce. You need to eat bigger portions, but as long as you eat enough, you will get the calories you need and you will get the protein you need. But for me, I am not obsessed on protein as being the main source of energy. You can stuff me full of tofu and lentils and chickpeas and nuts all day and yeah, I'll feel full, but I'm not gonna feel energized. That's not what gives me energy to do stuff in life. It's stuff like fruit and potatoes and rice, things that have high carbohydrate, high energizing qualities to them. So 
mood. I felt happy. I felt awesome. We went on a tangent here, but I'm trying to throw in little learning nuggets along the way. I will do another video on how to properly succeed on a vegan diet as far as what to eat uh, following after this. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Uh, but back to health improvements. Number six, brain fog. This again was another thing that lifted in just a few days. Again, when you're not eating the right foods, your brain is not getting the right nutrients. You're going to feel kind of in a haze. And when I started eating all of these foods, I, my brain fog totally lifted and I didn't know how much mental clarity I could actually have. I, it was pretty amazing. And this is again, something that's helped me start to lift off of coffee and eventually come off of coffee completely because it, I, I realized how much coffee is fake energy and not giving me real, you know, people like, Oh, coffee gets you things done. They're like, well, it's a drug, but when I was eating these foods or, and I still eat these foods, or I mean, when I started eating these foods, I felt for the first time mental clarity and I could sit down to do work and be with my students for five hours straight and just be focused and energized and engaged and have ideas come through and be able to speak clearly and be able to engage and lift up my kids and have passion. And that's really important to me. That's how I want to live my life. And I'm not currently teaching anymore, but I work in a restaurant and it's the same thing. It's a very fast paced and chaotic and busy thing where I need to be multitasking. I need to be talking to multiple people. I need to be, it's very physical and I need to be handling a lot of things at once and handling a lot of stress at once and dealing with difficult people who are so upset because their burger wasn't cooked right or whatever. I, I need to be mentally on for that and eating this way lets me do that. And I, you know, the other day I, Sundays I work early, it's brunch shift. And for anyone that's ever worked in a restaurant, you know that <laughs> Sunday brunch is a special kind of people. They are difficult. And, but I, we opened the store, we have to get there very early, early. So I woke up at 5.30 AM, had no coffee, did an eight hour shift, only ate fruit the whole time and had incredible energy. And it was a super chaotic, busy day, but I was able to just find my flow and be able to speak and engage with people properly. And then I came home and filmed actually, filmed and edited three YouTube videos after that because I still had energy to keep going. And that's an example of what this does for the brain when you give it the proper fuel. Number seven, skin and hair. This was another exciting bonus I wasn't totally ex expecting. My hair, um, I was platinum blonde when I first came to this lifestyle and that is not healthy. I was, it was a performing art, my artistic director, and she was this French lady, she's like, I want you blonde. So I was like, okay, I'll be blonde. So I was platinum blonde. That's not healthy for your hair, but I was doing it for the art. So <clears throat> that is fine. But I did notice it started to feel thicker and fuller. And despite bleaching my hair every five weeks for six years, it didn't fall out. So I think that's a testament to how it probably saved my hair and now my hair is really thick and full and healthy and i put nothing in it i have another video about this but i've mentioned this before i only use a coconut oil bar soap to wash it and that's it i use no product i use no sprays i use no oils i use no conditioner regular shampoo nothing in it i don't dye it i don't touch it this is just healthy hair that is happy from the nutrients I'm putting in my body. So no falling out vegan hair here. <laughs> and then my skin, this was something um, when I did 10 years ago, I did notice this right away. I started to have a glow in my skin and I started to get compliments all the time. Not that you should just live for compliments, but just as a testament to this of people saying, my gosh, what do you do to your skin? It's so glowy and bright and <clears throat> I, it was like, I, I don't know. I had never gotten compliments on my skin in my life. And while I didn't have cystic acne, I always had spots kind of just like normal breakouts. Everyone thinks that you have. And I, they were but sometimes very deep and painful and no one likes to have zits. Like that sucks. Like, yes, it's just a cosmetic thing. They're not dangerous, but they can be painful and they're unsightly and no one, everyone likes to feel their best. My breakouts totally disappeared and I started to have this natural glow on my skin and that's how I stopped wearing foundation and makeup because I found my skin just looked better without it and it was it was really interesting to me and I still get people saying, like, oh, you must put all these expensive products on your skin because we're sold this lie of the beauty industry if you need to spend thousands of dollars and do shit like microdermabrasion and Botox and a vampire facial peel, which 
I don't know what the hell that is, but I've heard of it. It's definitely a thing. Like you don't have to do that. Just eat the right foods and your skin will be happy. And so I put absolutely nothing on my skin except for a little dab of lotion, like on my eyelids and on my lips. Um, and then that coconut, same coconut oil soap I use on my hair. I use it on my face and that is it. And my skin is very happy from eating all this way. Okay, where are we? 25 minutes. All right, I'll try to wrap this up. If you're still with me, awesome. Let's keep going. Digestion. Okay, no one likes to talk about poop. It's sort of a taboo subject, but it is important. There are so many diseases that can start in your digestive tract, and I'm sure it's you know been big in the news of Kate Middleton has uh, colon cancer or abdominal cancer or something like that, and that's someone who looks very beautiful and healthy, but it still goes to show if things aren't right on the inside, then you can have serious, very scary, life-threatening problems. And being able to eliminate waste properly and healthy and regularly is super, super, super important. And some people think it's normal to just eliminate waste every few days or a week or once a week, and that is very dangerous. And that is how polyps happen. That's how colon cancer happens. That's how many other diseases can transpire because you need a healthy colon and you need to be, if you're eating every day, you need to be eliminating waste every day. And while I never had horrible digestion, <clears throat> I would say that, <clears throat> sorry, I'm talking a lot here. I would say that it was fine. It was okay-ish, but when just within a few days of coming to this lifestyle and eating these whole plant foods, it got, I would call it amazing, which super regular, there's never an issue. I always used to be bloated after meals. I'm never bloated anymore. I can eat a giant box of pasta, like, you know, the family size where it's like, serve six, serves one, vegan. <laughs> I will eat the whole box of pasta and I will not have a food baby after it. And I'm not, you know, like, it's not all about physical appearance, but bloating is a sign of things not being digested properly. And that is a sign of disease and other ailments that can come if you're not digesting your food properly, not absorbing the nutrients and not eliminating properly. So bloating is kind of like the canary in the coal mine of other things might be going on. And of course, no one likes to feel bloated or look bloated. It's uncomfortable. So that totally went away. And one of my students, actually, this was years ago, she was inspired to go vegan and she was very young, fit and healthy. She was 13. She was a you know, synchronized swimmer that I was coaching and so very active and she was thin and looked healthy, but her digestion was absolutely horrendous. She would only eliminate once every three weeks, which is very, very dangerous. And especially as you get into older years, this could have been very scary problems for horror. But, and she was on many, 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 many medications for this. She said within a few days, days after years of never being able to eliminate her, her poop and having to take so many meds, within days of being vegan and focusing on whole plant foods, she was eliminating every day, sometimes twice a day. And again, I hope, you know, if everyone's cringing like, oh, poop, like, I'm sorry, but this is, you know, that's where your health starts and you need to normalize this to be able to talk about it. And we were often told to go to Western medicine, take this pill, take that pill. People get their colons cut out and we, it's the food, it's the food, it's the food. It always comes back to what we are putting in our body. And I thought that was pretty amazing to see in real time, someone that had severe digestive disorders within days of transition to eating like this, be able to come off of all of her medication and eliminate properly. And that probably saved her massive health, health problems for the future. Number nine, my cycle. Again, something we don't always hear women talk about. It should be normalized. If we are a woman, you have one. My cycle became very easy. I never had a horrible cycle, but I had the normal of just like pain. You know, it, it's, it's painful to have the, your cycle for many women. And when I came to this lifestyle, it, the pain completely went away and it's very light and very easy. And now it's actually a, you know, people might cringe or laugh at this. It's actually an enjoyable experience for me because <clears throat> we're, that's another thing we're trained as women to, to hate our cycle and to see it as a burden and this awful thing we have to deal with and here take birth control. So you'll just never have one and the consequences of that. And for me, it's actually now a spiritual experience because I'm not in pain with it. There's definitely a sensation there, but it's a very grounding sensation and it's a very spiritual thing of just being connected to this force of nature that is bigger than us. You know, we don't control our cycles. That's our body just doing its thing, but it's a beautiful thing. And this is what life comes out of. There would be no human life without a woman's cycle. It's just part of it. So 
I found it to be a, now a very uh, spiritual experience that I will meditate into and feel into my body and appreciate that my body has this ability to create life and the mystical just awesomeness that is to be a woman. And if you're in chronic, horrible pain with your, your cycle, it is hard to appreciate that. But now that I am eating foods that my body loves and things are in balance, my cycle is never an issue for me. Going off of that, ovarian cysts. This one is a scary one because you actually, a ruptured ovarian cyst can kill you. And prior to being vegan, I for about three years was suffering from horrible chronic ovarian cysts. It probably was polycystic ovarian cyst syndrome. I never got officially diagnosed, but I did go to doctors and I got the internal ultrasound, which is always awkward and fun. But I had one on me that was three centimeters in diameter. And to put into perspective, your, your ovaries and your uterus are not that big. So three centimeters of a growth inside, that is extraordinarily painful. It started pulling and twisting on not only my ovaries and my uterus, but all the surrounding organs. So every time I would take a step or move, it was excruciating. I was a professional athlete at that time, so had to perform through that pain. And again, a ruptured ovarian cyst is a very, very dangerous thing. And they, the remedies for that, they tell, they can either do hysterectomies or put you on crazy medication or birth control. And I am not a fan of birth control. I can do another video on that. Let me know if you're interested, but I do not like messing with the internal hormones of the body. And it's again, that Western medicine mentality of treating the symptom and not the cause. Those things will alleviate your symptoms of those horrible ovarian cysts, but what was the cause? For me, it was dairy. Within one month of taking dairy out of my diet, the cyst disappeared and never came back. It has been 10 years and I have not had horrible, painful ovarian cysts. And to me, that is nothing short of a miracle because it, again, that is something that could have caused me severe health problems and or I was, you know, the remedies were not something I do not want to put myself on birth control. I do not want to have a hysterectomy. I don't want my body cut open and, but I don't want to die from a ruptured ovarian cyst either. And it was pretty incredible that within one month of removing dairy, which again, dairy has even the organic kind, it is filled with hormones that are designed for baby cows. They're exogenous. They're not natural to human. They're not natural to go in the human body. So you don't need to be consuming them. And that's what was causing this excess growth in my body. So within one month of being dairy, ovarian cysts completely disappeared and never came back. Number 11, okay, I'm trying to wrap this up here. I This can be a whole separate other video because this is a can of worms, but I will put it succinctly that coming from a performing artist and professional athlete background where I, my body was in my contract and I had to be, the pressure to be thin was absolutely there. And I bought into the Western diet mindset of just restrict, 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 eat less, mind your portions, just tough it out. And that sucks. That is no way to live, especially if you're a performing artist or a professional athlete where you have to exert so much energy, but no one should have to live like that. You should not have to restrict yourself. You should not have to starve in certain windows or push your plate back or just go to bed hungry or slam coffee to suppress your appetite. Like that sucks. No other animal in nature will just say, push it back and say, I'm not, I'm not supposed to eat in this. They just eat what they're supposed to eat. And I found when I came to this lifestyle, my, I had a much and still have a much healthier relationship with food. Am I perfect every day? No, sometimes I do slip into old mental patterns of restriction and I pay the consequences when I do that. I will feel like shit the next day if I don't eat. And I think that's where so many vegans fail also is they'll do these things like juice fasts or uh, water fasts, like cleansing and just not eat for two weeks and they'll lose a bunch of weight and be like, oh, this is awesome but they just put their body through hell. You just deprived your body from so many nutrients. So of course you're gonna have some big time consequences that can really mess up your microbiome, that will screw up your energy levels, that will screw up your, uh, your potassium levels, all sorts of things. So I don't recommend those. Very short term fasting if you're say, you know, in a, a chronic health condition, like something like a one to two day fast. I think there's definitely health benefits of that, but drinking nothing but juice for two weeks, <clears throat> No, you don't need to do that. That's not what being vegan is. Veganism is abundance. It's eating large portions and eating enough and eating till you're satiated and getting energy from that. And that to me was a, a lifesaver because I was able to transition out of this idea that I had to starve myself to have the body I want. 
I was eating twice as much as I was eating and actually became leaner. And it's again, it's not all about aesthetics because that's a shallow thing. The health is the bigger picture, but where everyone faces that pressure to want to look and feel their best in their body. And I, to be able to come to a place where I could eat enough and actually have energy and actually feel good in my body was a flat out miracle. And there's so many young girls out there starving themselves right now. And I want to push that you don't have to do that. That is no way to live. It is dangerous. It will make you miserable. It will destroy your mental and physical health. You don't have to do that. You can eat abundantly on a whole foods plant-based diet. Which leads me to number 12, the biggest, well, I don't know, yeah, the biggest, because I would say this is the most important on the grand scheme of things, is this healed my heart. Eating this way and living in a way that's much more eco-conscious for the animals, for the planet, for my own health, and just creating a, a vibration of peace around me, it opened my heart in a way that hadn't ever I hadn't ever felt before. I didn't understand what an open heart meant. And when I started eating this way and just feeling the joy and simplicity of like sitting with a papaya and being like, holy shit, the earth just made this and I didn't have to do anything. You can just pick it and eat it and it's delicious and energizing and full of nutrients and it grows abundantly on the planet. Like what a miracle, what a gift. And I can eat this way and not hurt animals, not hurt the ecosystem. and. That has been a, a very beautiful experience and to transition into a life where I feel like my heart is more open and I want to spread that love and positivity to the world. So, okay, we're 36 minutes in. If you watched this whole thing, you're a champ or maybe hopefully you can take a pause if you needed to and won't watch the rest of this. But um, those are, that is my health journey. I am, again, it's been almost 10 years and I am turning 40 in June. So I am basically 40 years old, close enough, and 10 years of being vegan, I do feel qualified to speak about the long-term effects of it now. And let me know in the comments, I would love to hear from you if any of this is inspiring. If you have more questions, I love spreading knowledge about this. Um, if you wanna hear more in-depth vegan videos in the future, and if you struggled with veganism, tell me your struggles. And I have a lot of knowledge on this. I have studied the, I will do again more videos on the actual science and nutrition breakdown of this too and kind of exactly how to eat. Um, yeah, let me know any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I wish you a blessed day. Bye.